And we should be live on Twitch. Just slightly early, so I will sit here quietly. At least a little quietly. Because, you know, sipping coffee even makes noise. And while I'm at it, I need to get Twitch on my phone so I can monitor the Twitch uh, chat. Actually, since I got Twitch installed on this tablet, what I will do, we'll get the tablet started and monitor here. Because that will be the large print edition. So while I'm waiting for the tablet to start up, um, I'm going to look at mosaics uh, today, which is a feature of Map Warper that can be really useful, and particularly valuable with, uh, with the Sanborn insurance maps and other similar maps, because uh, one of the challenges with these guys is that they have these really tiny plates. Um, just a couple blocks at a time and you end up managing really absurd numbers of URLs and that's a pain in the neck in the editors and so the mosaics are a major simplification so this is the mosaic we're going to be looking at today this is one that I started on a while ago and um, have used it a bit in downtown Albany. You know, we look over here and we see the pattern of tiles. Yeah, most of this is pretty good. One of the challenges that you get and here's an example right here is that this tile is omitted due to lack of reference points and somewhere here I am going to come in and do this tile basically because I can match up with the edges of the Sanborn map tiles around it. Um, I did something similar to that over here where the Dunn Bridge is located because uh, the highway construction of the 60s and 70s pretty much wiped this out. Um, that's one of the big challenges. This is an 1892 map and uh, a lot of construction has happened and a lot of change. So today we're looking across the river at the city of Rensselaer which is also part of the 1892 Sanborn map. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit the title and add Albany Rensselaer because Names should be descriptive. And then Map Warper doesn't usually update these things until you do a refresh, but now the title has changed to Albany Rensselaer. And that's just minor housekeeping. Part of Rensselaer we're going to look at today is on the north end of the city near the river. This is an area that's changed some, and we're about to start learning about that. But there is, for the at least for the very first tile, enough data. So here is the map snippet. We're going to, excuse me, the plate from the Sanborn insurance map for Rensselaer that we're going to be using. And the first really noticeable thing 
is that some of the names have changed. Some of them have not. So for example, Tracy Street is right here. Tracy Street is right here. There's no actual name shown. Okay, we zoomed in and that comes up. Forbes it's labeled uh, mineral in 1892. This is ferry. And that turns out to be central in 1890, or excuse me, central today. This park is actually still there today, although there has been some road reconfiguration right here, so I can't get a hard reference point at the north end of the park. That's okay. This Fowler is still there, although we see that um, this part of Fowler next to the park has been reduced to an alley. So this chunk has disappeared, but you know, Broadway is the same, and it's all, you know, close enough. So, let's drop that, although, I want to look at one thing here. I want to switch to Mapbox Satellite because, yeah, you see if we go to OpenStreetMap, you see there's a little angle on the geometry. And we go to Mapbox Satellite, <coughs> we can see the alignment a little better and see that maybe OpenStreetMap needs to be tweaked through here because this is really straight. There's not an angle there. So we'll switch back to Control Point. Move that slightly closer to the middle. That's yeah, probably. Yeah. Can we zoom in any further over here? No, we don't get to zoom in any further. This is as close as we get. So I'm going to declare a victory here and add the control point. So that's our first one. Okay, so Ferry and Broadway, pretty good. Congress and Broadway. We need three. Three will probably be pretty good. You see that they basically, instead of having the nose be square, it's pointed, so we can't really do anything there. Here is the junction where Fowler turns into this little side street. Now it used to be real a real street, but you know, we'll take that is probably pretty good. Get out of that mode. Let's go back and look at open street map. Yeah, we're in good shape. So, warp image and see what we get. Now, before I uploaded this snippet, of course, I rotated it so it is in rough alignment just because, you know, see, obviously north is uh, slightly different. The alignment of the streets is parallel to the river, more or less. And uh, we've warped the image. Well, let's and really this alignment's fine I mean this is one of the nice things about working with these uh, Sanborn maps is that um, they're such small snippets and they're so accurately measured that they tend to align really quickly and easily 
So we want to add this to the mosaic, but not right away, because there's something else we got to do here. I'm going to come over to the crop tab because you see that the part of the map that matters is the part with the actual building outlines and these blocks that don't have any buildings on them are going to come from another Sanborn map. So in order to have the mosaic look good we need to do a crop. So let's see if we get this right. First of all, we're going to take all of the river outline. And we're going to run up through Ferry. And then we're going to run through the middle of the park, down Fowler, to the edge of the map, all the way over. And for the last one, we double click. So we have outline the mask we want to use and we click on mask map masked and rectified so let's go look at preview and you see what preview has done is it's showing us the map with mask applied so now we actually have all these building footprints. And the other thing that I'll point out that's actually kind of valuable, see how the river bank is moved? One of the interesting properties along this stretch of the Hudson is that there were once islands, and those islands, so basically the channels have been filled in, and that's happened a lot in this stretch of the Hudson. So this will allow us to help recover the old shoreline and open historical map. So that's what we need to do here, but now we need to go back to this mosaic and go back to edit. Now this is something that could maybe be streamlined, but um, it hasn't. This is basically a list of all the maps I've ever uploaded to Map Warper. And we go to the very end, and we check off the box for the newly added map. Go back to the top, update. Then go back to show. And reload because it's going to need a reload before it will actually show me uh, what's happened. And now you see we have a little piece of Rensselaer mast and filled in. The cropping's pretty significant. Um, actually, before I go over there, if I want to actually use this, then it's exactly the same as for a individually uploaded map. The export tab gives me tiles and Google OSM scheme. I go into JOSM. Now, I guess there's a way to do this in ID, but I'm not an ID guy. But you copy that URL and paste it in as a TMS URL in JOSM preferences, and it becomes a layer that you can access. So instead of having to handle URLs for all of the individual maps over here, you can just use URLs for the uh, individual mosaic. Now I have another mosaic here, which is one that I'm going to need to go back and do some work on. It's a work in progress. This is a 1952 aerial imagery pass from the USGS website that I've been slowly building with time. And the thing I haven't done here is any cropping. And it turns out this actually significantly limits the utility of the mosaic because of the overlap and the black boundaries of the images. And if you note that things overlap, you realize that uh, there are choices to be made about where to crop. The conclusion that I've come to, and I need to go execute it with this mosaic, is that I should really crop 
a center section of the mosaic because it's easiest to get alignment over the center of these and at some point I'm going to go back and experiment with that but that's all I really want to say about this one because I am not going to open that can of worms today um, one of the nice things about it though is I'm going to kill this tab now I'm going to go back over here is that if I go to mask I can if I need to delete the mask and do it over again which is uh, allows you to fiddle with masks until you get them right if there are issues so now I uh, just downloaded a couple more of these so I'm gonna look at an adjacent tile pane 92 from the the map we're going to go to upload map actually before we go to upload map the format I use for these is basically 1892 let's get that in there let's bring up the map so I've got 1892 Rensselaer Sanborn and then I want to be a little better about my identification Washington Ferry and first so I just put a couple of the street names in the section which should identify it subject area Sanborn fire insurance maps in this case we'll use the file name which is long and complicated and involved from the Library of Congress website I can't really get a reference URL because of the way it's configured though I don't worry about it publisher Sanborn insurance place of publication Library of Congress date depicted 1892 and create and this will take a moment which will allow me to consume coffee and the only way you can tell it's running is by looking at that little uh, little ball bouncing back and forth up in the tab and you should not disturb it while that's happening or you're gonna have to do this all over again In addition to rotating the map into the alignment I want, I also um, converted it to JPEG in a adequate level of resolution just so that uh, just so that um, they were nice on Tim's uh, resources. Okay, I finally got around to starting chat on uh, on Twitch so that I can check, and I have not missed anything anybody's typed in, so we're just watching it upload and upload. I mean, this is a relatively small map, so this isn't going to be that painful, but it still takes a little time. This is Washington Avenue on the very north end, and so one of the things that's going to be interesting is looking at the extent of reconfigurations on this end. We go to the Rectify tab. 
one of the nice things is that because uh, I'm a mapper and we're doing mapping projects, which all of you, of course, are just like me in that regard, I know where Rensselaer is. It just takes a while to zoom in enough to actually be looking at it. Yeah, if you're mapping things and you don't know where they are, then, um, you know, I'm not really quite sure about your goals. Okay, yeah, you see. They have, in fact, changed. Okay, what's happened is that this, which was mineral, used to connect to Washington and it no longer does. I was interested to see how this was going to match up with this and now we can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Washington reference point from up here and I'm going to use Ferry and Broadway The other thing is it sure looks to me like they've done some renaming here because we have Broadway Watson first and now we have Broadway first second. So I'm going to guess that they changed their mind about what first was. In any case we've got Ferry and Mineral, that is to say Central and, what was that again? Central and Forbes. Do I want to gamble that that hasn't moved? Uh, not really. And in fact, I think Mapbox Satellite is probably the smart way to go here. So we're going to assume that Washington and Watson matches up with Washington and First. And this is a really common issue that you get when um, you're looking at uh, you know, 100 year plus gaps is that street names really do kind of move around. Uh, I looked at the city of Nevada, Iowa because I have family connections there and I was helping out a little bit with uh, Lincoln Highway mapping and um, discovered that between the late 1800s and today they completely redid their street names. And I was very fortunate that I found a Sanborn map from the transition that showed old and new street names. So there's my three reference points. Let's get out of control point mode before we drop one we don't want. Warp image. And this seems well aligned and in good proportion. So my assumption that first is Watson seems to have paid off. I'm going to crop it. And the answer, I know this because I looked, you know, is that there are no tiles north of this one in Rensselaer. So we just need to do this crop, which is a pretty easy one. Okay, didn't get the double click. Do it again. Good enough. Check it in preview. 
Not that I expect anything different. And uh, we can also come over here. Okay, but we don't have the map box base layer here. That's okay. Now, come back to the mosaic. Edit. Scroll down. New map added to the bottom. Note that it's actually, it's interesting to me whether it's going to be possible to uh, have, collaborate on a mosaic. You're only allowed to choose from your favorites, and I have no idea if you're actually allowed to uh, add your map or image to someone else's mosaic. So there it is. I think I'll go ahead and add one more and then I'm going to uh, close this stream out for the day. This is showing the new map. I'm going to go to so upload. One thing I always do first is select the image. Now I'm going to be changing these to green. That's the way in the Mac file system anyway that I can remind myself that these are already uploaded somewhere, so I shouldn't do it again. But I always do the upload an image file first because uh, the way that the error handling, if you forget the image file, is you know it's time consuming it, it's not deadly but you're gonna watch it spin for a while before it tells you that it can't upload so we got fairy fowler ward because this is a, a step up the hill You have to be careful to tab and not hit the return key when you're editing in these fields because hitting the return key will uh, launch the upload. Mm. Then it will either hit an error Or it will upload with these things not entirely filled out, which you can kind of uh, clean up afterwards. But from a viewpoint of just being efficient and systematic, I would rather complete all the fields um, before I click upload rather than go in and backfill stuff that I forgot. I do fill in source and bibliographic URLs at times because, you know, in the New York State Archive, for example, generally maps do have unique URLs for their location on the website. And some, uh, some libraries will actually give you a URI, which is the official reference. Some of them will also give you call numbers. Um, uh, you, you figure out what's actually there to fill in and um, just you know all of these are, are optional 
So, you know, document it as best you can and don't worry about it too much. As long as somebody can figure out where the map came from, it's fine. sitting watching the bouncing ball is always the most calming part of this whole process and also while we're watching the bouncing ball I am doing a introduction to open historic map presentation at wiki conference uh, 2021 on Friday a little bit after one I have posted about it to uh, discord and uh, to slack and um, to Twitter I think so you know the information is out there it is going to be basic introduction but you know it's an audience that is and many of the people have never heard of open historic map and um, the theory here is that they will probably welcome learning about this resource since a lot of how open historic map functions is very much in the spirit of wiki projects As I have pointed out, I'm not sure that we actually ever really said we should be a wiki project. It's just like, well, this would be really cool if OpenStreetMap could become a basis for a historic map. And so we inherited all of how it works, which included the wiki model. And it has worked well. And we're absolutely going to keep it. So Ferry Street is central. Now the stuff along the ridge, because this green border is actually represents a ridge in Rensselaer. I'm the guy who drove through the city of Rensselaer and uh, verified all the streets. So I've seen all of this live, and I can tell you that it is... Uh, pretty interesting up there obviously I didn't quite adjust that one spot on Broadway the way I should have but you know life is tough so this is the nose of the park and so the next street down is Fowler point right here and that's going to match up right here and we'll go up a couple of blocks and yeah we've got this here feel a little bit more comfortable dropping that point there so that's two blocks up so that's going to be this guy right here and here and then you got this weird bend following the park And the former Ferry Street here and here. Let's go look. So, yeah, Second Street became Third Street. The renumbering is consistent up the hill. How we're going to model that life cycle aspect, of course, is another open uh, historical map issue that we think we know how that should be done, but uh, I 
it's not completely supported in the renderer on the uh, main website yet, but using relations to convey that is the likely way that that's going to happen. So crop one more time. So ferry all the way to the edge of the map because that's where the hill is and there is not a plate over there and then we need to go around what's going to turn out to be the boundary of the plate and then we just drop it in the middle of the park mask the map Go to preview and just sanity check this, although I don't think there's any major issue that's going to come up here. Yeah, that's fine. So, edit the mosaic all the way to the bottom. Checkbox. Update. to show reload page so you can see that we've started building out the tiles and um, you know, a little bit of progress at a time, but this is going to allow me to start looking at the differences between Rensselaer today and Rensselaer in 1892. I and mean, we've already done a bit of this mapping an open historic map, but there's a lot more ahead. I don't see any questions in chat, so and my mouse has decided to do things that are annoying so we're gonna call it a day so we'll see you on the next stream or maybe um, on Friday for the introductory talk